So this is part something, and uh, let's examine, let's uh, block out this animation using constant interpolation. Uh, so, so constant interpolation doesn't uh, doesn't do calculation between uh, because as you can as you saw that uh, when we are animating, uh, I don't want to remove these. So let me see if I can add a different layer of an annotations here. So new, maybe change the color. Hmm. Onion skin and uh, look this here. So we don't need onion skin. Okay. Okay. So. So as you saw, when we were keyframing, we only we had our timeline here. So this is zero. Uh, this is one hundred. One hundred, and this is our timeline. So we, we we were only marking a few keyframes here, and let's say here, and here, and here, and then Blender was able to calculate what was going on in between those keyframes uh, using different interpolations. Again, there is constant uh, Bezier and uh, linear uh, so linear gives you more control and uh, kind of adds these slow and speed up points uh, so that is Bezier and then linear just does constant speed so the way it moves from here it moves from the from here to here it uses a constant speed and here to here uses a constant speed and uh, the same here uh, but Bezier sorry constant interpolation doesn't add in keyframes in between here. Blender, Blender doesn't make any calculation to see how the ball will, will move from one key set, keyframe you set to another one. So instead of that, it just plays back the different keyframes you have added, as you can see in our animation here. And uh, so we want to block out this animation here. And this is good when you're just blocking out the animation to just fi to figure out where the different, <coughs> the main keyframes would be. Uh, so so we, we, we start at 25, the ball falls down at around there, and at maybe to around 30, it should bounce back to around here. Again, using constant interpolation, let's, let me first turn off these here. Let's move this uh, ball to that position there. Now, when we play back, remember we're only recording uh, the positions. Let's see. This is what we have. So if we play back, then to around here. So it would take less time at fall back here. So that's why I'm leaving less distance between this, uh, because this is the time it would take from this position uh, to this position. And we'll edit that depending on the feel of the animation. Uh, so this would be maybe half the time. So to fall there, and then again, half the time it should be around there. I think this is too far, so I think I can drop it up here. Again, make sure it's not going through, uh, going through the ground, to around there, 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 then shouldn't go too far up. So it's, it's slowing down in momentum. And uh, maybe this time it doesn't even bounce back. It just goes and uh, maybe even falls off like that. So let's see how that looks. So if we play back, so it's kind of speeding up around here. So I think maybe we don't need this keyframe here. So I can delete that. You see, I think it's also spending a lot of time here. So we can uh, delete these keyframes and bring these
So I think this should be around there. And now we can end our animation at 60 frames there. And uh, you can also see that uh, the timing is not too bad. Uh, this is the good thing about uh, constant interpolation that uh, you can block out the animation without worrying about uh, the, diff the, the in between the in betweens uh, of the animation. So you just look at uh, if the animation looks good, and then yeah. So from there, in the next lesson, we're going to look at how to convert this into linear interpolation and uh, examine the animation there. So again, let me save this project so that if you want it, you can just get it on my Patreon page. So file savers, just call this. Let me first save, then save as linear interpolation. So this is where we're going to start in the next lesson.